Archbishop Vincent Michael Kunsessa, a shepherd known for his love and care, especially for the poor, has always been a role model for many of the priests in the Archdiocese of Delhi. He was the Auxiliary Bishop of Delhi from 1995 to 1998. He was then made the Archbishop of Agra from 1998 till 2000 followed by his tenure as Archbishop of Delhi till the year 2012. He was born on 28 September 1936 to Francis and Apollina Concesao of Puttu as the fifth born amidst eight siblings. They were five brothers and three sisters. One of his sisters is a nun belonging to the congregation of Bethany Sisters. It is said that while he was about to follow the Lord's call, there was a small tragic incident in his house. Having been faced with a dilemma in this situation, young Vincent chose to follow the Lord's call rather than turn back. In his own words, Had I not taken the plunge then, perhaps I would never have entered the orders. It was a painful decision, but by God's grace, I was able to find my peace and settle down in due course. The Diamond Jubilee of the Priestly Ordination of our dear Archbishop Vincent Cossessao is an occasion of great thanksgiving to God for the gift of His Grace Archbishop Vincent Cossessao to the Archdiocese of Delhi and to the Church in India and the Universal Church. His Grace Archbishop Vincent Cossessao has always come across to us as a person of utter honesty, integrity and commitment to the Lord in the service of His Gospel for the proclamation of God's Kingdom. He has been my rector uh, at Pratiksha and I have seen him from close quarters as also the Auxiliary Bishop of Delhi and then the Archbishop of Delhi. All through his life as a priest, as Auxiliary Bishop and as Archbishop, Archbishop Vincent Kossessao has manifested in his life his total commitment to the Lord. Archbishop Vincent was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Delhi on 4th December 1961 and was appointed assistant at the Sacred Heart Cathedral, New Delhi, for three years. Cathedral me, the uh, assistant, and I would say that Archbishop Vincent has a Sacred Heart. He is a man of Sacred Heart. Always to love always to have compassion for the people. And also he's a man of beatitude, who literally follows in his life all the beatitudes, in loving the people, the poor, being kind, generous, merciful. I've seen him that the optimum point of his anger is blessed fellow. Beyond that, he won't say anything, so once he says, Blessed fellow, so we know Archbishop is angry. And soon after that, he will come and reconcile. He pursued his master's in sociology at the Loyola University in Chicago. And on his return to the Archdiocese, he was appointed as the parish priest of what is now known as the Little Flap Parish Pushpavihar from 1975 to 1978. He was then appointed as the director of social action now known as Chetnalaya from 1978 to 1990. He is a man of heart for the poor who initiated, founded this organization called Chetnalaya, who is working with more than one lakh people as direct beneficiaries. We, the Chetnalaya family, wish him good health on this Diamond Jubilee and as a tribute to him, we will help 60 children towards their education and that will be our contribution towards his selfless service to the society. In the meantime, he also served as the director of Pratiksha, a residence for theology students in Delhi from 1979 to 1980.
from 1979 to 1988. My memory of Archbishop Vincent goes back to 1981 when I came to Delhi for the first time to stay at Pratiksha and study at Vidya Jyoti. When I was coming, I was already involved in social apostolate and when I saw at Pratiksha, Archbishop Vincent was both a rector and also director of Chetnale. At that time, it was known as a social action. And we were had a kind of a very good in interaction with him all the time. He made me to get involved already in development work uh, when I was already a student at Vidya Jyoti. So that those were days were very memorable. We had a very good community life. He used to call us all Baisa, Baisa, and he has a very uh, affectionate way of saying, TK, TK. So these all kind of, we always remember uh, that uh, all the time. And so simple and uh, on the table, uh, during dinner or meals, we used to have lots of conversation. We used to have a lot of fun, fooling each other, cracking jokes and so on. From the year 1990, he was appointed parish priest of the Cathedral Church and elected to the post of the Vicar General of the Delhi Archdiocese. In 1995, he was appointed Auxiliary Bishop of Delhi by Pope St. John Paul II. In 1998, he was transferred to Agra as its Archbishop. When Archbishop Alan Delastic passed away in an accident, Archbishop Vincent was transferred back to Delhi as the Archbishop and served till his retirement in 2012, following which he is now residing at the Church of Immaculate Conception, Kanhei. He was elected Chairman of the CBCI Commission for Health and elected as Vice President of CBCI and CCBI. He was also the Chairman of the Regional Council of the Bishops of the Northern Region. Meanwhile, he was also the President of the Indian Christian Forum, representing the CBCI, NCCI and EFI till his retirement. Archbishop Vincent Kossasau has a very special place in making the Delhi Archdiocese so important to civil society, to human rights, and to the growth of the laity in India. I remember his role in the Indian emergency of 1975, where his work is still talked about in Dakshin Puri. And I remember him working with Alan Elastic, the late Archbishop, and then when he himself was the Archbishop of Delhi. The liberty he gave to the laity, the encouragement he gave to civil society, the personal participation that he made, whether it was an agitation or a rally or a demonstration, they, they went so far in giving and encouraging movements for the Dalit Christians, movements for religion and faith, movements for the rights of tribals, Adivasis and others, and movements for the freedom of expression. So his role is not just in the church, it is his role in encouraging his religious, his priests and his laity to go out and, and be a part of movements, people's movements and civil society in India in this very crucial phase of Indian history. He was and continues to be the convener of UCPI, that is the United Christian Prayer for India. With his various posts and accomplishments, what stands out most was his love for the poor. The Janta Darbar, a popular venture of his to meet anyone who knocks at his door for help and reach out to them, was his attempt at walking on the footsteps of the master who called him. My involvement with the Arch Archbishop in the in the Sunday Sunday Paul, it is a long uh, innings. He wanted to have a meeting every Thursday. Open Darbar, it's called it's called Open Darbar. Any people who can come to meet him on every Thursday up to four o'clock. And that goes up to sometimes 8 o'clock. 
Then he is, uh, asked me, there are so many poor people are coming to meet me. Will you, will, will you able to help us in helping those poor people? I discussed with my team. They are all agreeable to that. Then they are all appreciated the willingness to support the poor through the Sandman Sandhi Park. He once said that working among the poor has been a great experience. I have often been humbled by the generosity that I came across among them and have been struck by their awesome power to endure privation and suffering without grumbling. It has left a permanent impression on me. Archbishop Vincent Concesao has been to the priests of the Archdiocese of Delhi a role model for his life of humility and simplicity. A cheerful shepherd who has won many hearts with his endearing person. Hearty congratulations to you, dear Archbishop Vincent Michael Concesao. I wish you, dear Bishop, a very happy life for the future. I pray for your good health. I pray that you continue to live many more years so that you become our inspiration, you become a strength, you become a model. God bless you. We, the Chetanalaya family, wish him uh, good health on this Diamond Jubilee. I'm personally very grateful to Archbishop Vincent for the encouragement he has given me uh, to play my role in civil society in the Catholic Union and in uh, encouraging the laity to be more responsive to the needs of the people. And therefore it is with a sense of gratitude and great pleasure that I greet him on this very important landmark in his life's journey as a priest, as a role model, and as an exemplar. And I wish him on this occasion of Diamond Jubilee a very good Jubilee, Your Grace, and may you have many more years to live on and add, may God add many more years to your life. As you celebrate his diamond jubilee of the priestly word nation, I wish him all success with his bishop and I pray to Almighty that keep him in the good health and happiness. Once in a while, there comes someone special like you who not only serves the church and his people faithfully, but who makes of their own life a living testimony of Christ's love. I would especially like to thank you for your expression of faith which has helped us over the years as you have helped us grow despite the uncertainty and fears. Honoring your 60 years of service to God, we pray and thank Almighty God for the gift of our dear Bishop Uncle in our family. We feel really blessed. Congratulations and happy 60 years for your many years of devoted and caring ministry with prayers of gratitude for all your faithful works. God grant you good health. May your life in God's service always be filled with joy. We love you, dear Bishop Uncle. We pray that God may bless him in every way and that he may continue to be a role model for us and that he may continue to exude for each and every one who comes in touch with him that joy that is there always and which is manifested on his, his face, the inner joy of the Holy Spirit. May God bless him always and give him a long life to be in our midst for many, many years to come.